Welcome once again to Heart of a Shepherd. We are continuing our chronological study of the scriptures, and we are today opening our Bibles to 1 Thessalonians. That's uh, Paul's first epistle to the church at Thessalonica. Our scripture reading, three chapters, 1 Thessalonians 1, 2, and 3. And I've titled this devotional, Spiritual Virtues, Faith, Love, and Hope. I do invite you to open your Bible with me. This is a longer scripture reading than would be typical. And uh, also, I'm afraid that my devotional is going to have some gaps because it cannot possibly cover all the content that we find in these three chapters. Well, we find ourselves reading the first of two epistles, that is, letters that Paul wrote to believers in Thessalonica. And for the context, I want to invite you to recall our study of Acts 17. Now, in Acts chapter 17, Paul arrived in Thessalonica. Now, Thessalonica was the capital city of ancient Macedonia. And we know from the scriptures that for three days, or that is three Sabbaths rather, he boldly preached the gospel of Jesus Christ in the synagogue of that city. Now we read in Acts 17 and verse 3 that he was alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead according to the scriptures. Well, the reference is obvious, and that is to the prophecies, particularly of Isaiah in chapter 53. Now, the success of Paul's ministry in that city provoked unbelieving Jews to envy. And we read in verse 10 that they stirred up a mob against Paul and Silas and forced them to flee the city. Now, that's the background for, for our study of 1 Thessalonians. Now, notice then with me, I think, three key words I would suggest in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, and verses 1 and 2, and that is grace, peace, and thanks. That is thanksgiving. And I particularly, as a, a pastor of many years now, look at the salutation of Paul and just identify with him a shepherd's heart and honestly his longing for the saints of Thessalonica. For instance, consider how his salutation demonstrated a sincere love and longing for the believers. And so Paul writes these words in verse 1, Grace be unto you, peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And then verse 2, we give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. Now Paul began his second epistle with a similar greeting you'll notice in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verses uh, 1 through 3. And there we read again in verse 2, grace unto you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And then again in verse 3, we are bound to thank God always for you. And so this wonderful salutation of both grace, peace, and thanksgiving. And you know, certainly for those of you that might write emails or letters, you realize to, in our culture today and how fast moving we are, how little we value a salutation or a blessing of peace, grace, and thanksgiving. And so with those three themes, grace being God's gift of loving favor, like grace, peace is also a gift from God through Jesus Christ, and such peace and harmony come from the believer's security in God's love. And so Paul now, having greeted the saints with a longing that they would rest and the blessings of God's grace and peace erupted then in verse 2 of 1 Thessalonians with prayers of thanksgiving. And so he wrote, we give thanks to God always for you all. In his second epistle, Paul would write the same as I've already pointed out. We are bound to thank God always for you. Well, notice then with me what I would describe as three virtues that we find in verse 3. We find faith, hope, and love. Now, with Paul then, as he is away and he's reflected on the fact that the Thessalonica believers are suffering persecution now, Paul remembered the saints of Thessalonica 
his fond memories stirred his heart to rejoice and thank the Lord. Now, those believers, you understand, were not without faults. However, they did manifest three spiritual virtues that should inspire, and perhaps it might even be said, aspire all believers, and that is faith, love, and hope. And so Paul then wrote, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. And so the faith of the Thessalonian believers was more than a profession. It was a working faith. I find today the shallowness of many who profess to believe believers, they seem to have a faith that doesn't impact their life at all. But such is not the case with sincere faith. You see, sincere faith is a working faith. It is a faith that can say we're not saved by our works, but we work and we minister because of our faith. Now, uh, again, considering this, then the believers of Thessalonica then demonstrated their faith by their works. And so we have this faith. Secondly, we have love. The second virtue then was their, and I quote, labor of love in verse 3. Now, while love is an enduring motivation for ministering to others, you see a sincere love for God will be demonstrated in a readiness to love and serve others. And then finally, the third virtue is that of hope. And so we read in verse 3, finally, patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Now that was the third virtue, and it is a long-suffering, enduring, steadfast hope in Christ. And so, question, what motivates a believer to work, labor, and not lose hope? And the answer, the promise of Christ's coming. Paul would write in his letter to Titus, in Titus chapter 2 and verse 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to skip 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 for today and invite you to consider with me chapter 3. Now, though Paul fled Thessalonica when enemies of the gospel rose against him, he nevertheless longed to know the spiritual and physical welfare of the Thessalonica believers. Now, unable to go to Thessalonica, he sent Timothy, we read, and a young man he often identified in the scriptures as his spiritual son. And so Paul then, in this letter, taken no doubt by Timothy, commended Timothy to the believers and wrote of him, 1 Thessalonians 3 and verse 2, now this of Timothy, that Timothy is our brother and minister, that is a servant, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ. Now, Paul's purpose in sending Timothy was to see how the believers in Thessalonica fared and to establish or establish them and to comfort them concerning their faith. So Timothy's ministry was one of not only encouragement, but edification of building up and strengthening the faith of the believers of Thessalonica. Now, lest they be ashamed of him and his afflictions, Paul speaking of himself, or discouraged by the persecutions that they were suffering, Paul reminded the believers of Thessalonica in 1 Thessalonians 3 and verse 4, we told you before that we, Paul including himself, should suffer tribulation. Tribulation being times of trials, times of trouble, times of persecution even as it came to pass, and ye know. Now, having received no news of the welfare of the believers in that city, Paul had determined to send Timothy to know their state of affairs and their faith. Well, with rejoicing, Paul learned from Timothy that the believers in Thessalonica were abounding in faith 
and long to see him in 1 Thessalonians 3 and verse 6. Now that news stirred the old apostle's heart, strengthened his resolve that despite his persecutions and afflictions, the people were prospering in their faith. And so Paul wrote then of himself and his fellow ministers, uh, verse 8, for now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. In other words, the news that the Thessalonica believers were strong and faithful and true to God so encouraged the heart of Paul. Then as we close, 1 Thessalonians 3 verses 9 through 13, imagine with me, Paul, the apostle, a giant of the faith and a minister, found his faith was strengthened because the believers of Thessalonica sent a message that they loved and longed to see him. Paul's heart, in verses 9 through 10, overflowed with joy, and we read that he prayed night and day that he might see them. Well, though unable to come to Thessalonica, Paul's letter must suffice to assure his love and appeal for believers to continue in the faith. Now, assuring them of his longing for the Lord to direct his steps to them, that is for Paul to be allowed of the Lord to come to Thessalonica, Paul concluded this portion of the letter with a loving benediction. Notice with me verse 12. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we, Paul speaking of himself, do toward you. To the end that he may, that is the Lord, may establish your heart, your heart, unblameable, in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. There again, what was Paul looking toward and encouraging the believers in? To keep looking with hope for the coming of Christ. Well, may the same be true of every believer regarding this today. If Paul needed a word of encouragement, surely the same is true of every faithful minister. Every pastor longs to know his life and ministry have made a difference and that his labor has not been in vain. Such news not only stirs the minister's soul, but inspires him to pray with rejoicing for those he shepherds. May we, may you and I, all labor to increase and abound in love, verse 13, living in anticipation of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. And I conclude with this, even so, Lord, come quickly. Well, thank you, my friend, for being a part of Heart of a Shepherd. God bless. Bye-bye.